my name is uh, Richard Lamarchand and I am the co-lead game designer of Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. I think what a game designer like me does on a day-to-day -day basis when we're making a game like Uncharted 3 can vary hugely uh, depending on what stage of the project we're at. At the beginning of the project it's very much to do with coming up ideas uh, both for gameplay and sequences of story and also our tools, you know, what improvements we want to make to our tools and technology. Um, but where we are right now, which is getting close towards the big deadlines at the end of the project, uh, it's a very hectic process of building out the game ourselves, because everyone at Naughty Dog is very hands-on, working in our level layout tools and our scripting tools to put the thing together, and then doing lots of running around producing as well, making sure that everyone is talking to each other and that no problems are, are hanging around. So it's tremendously exciting. I love working at Naughty Dog. It's an amazingly talented group of people, uh, an amazingly nice group of people. We actually don't have anyone with the dedicated title of producer. Um, we are all our own producers. We have a game director, creative director and, and team leads who work closely with the company co-presidents to make sure that we're staying on track in terms of the kind of game we want to make and how much time we've got left to make it in. But uh, yeah, we really just run around all day talking to each other. I think that's the most important part. So often overlooked, you know, in a big technical team effort like the creation of a game like Uncharted 3. We have been working on the PS3 for almost as long as the hardware has existed and uh, it's interesting to think about the ways that our development processes have changed over that time. I think one of the big things that we learned early on working on the PlayStation 3 uh, is uh, something that a lot of game developers um, already apply to their work. Uh, it's the idea of, that you have to uh, use a lot of trial and error when you're making a game. We learned at the beginning of making Uncharted Drake's Fortune, the first game in the Uncharted series, that we'd spent a little too long talking and trying to think through how the game should be, rather than simply getting on and, and making it. And so now, when we get to a massive production, uh, like Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, we know that the very best way to make the best game that we can make is to just start building in the tools. And we can very quickly put together levels, and new game mechanics, and simply try things out and see what floats and what sinks. So that's definitely a big part of how we've got the game to the really great place that it's in here at E3 in 2011. When I first started working on Uncharted, I did have a good sense that this was going to be a big game series for Naughty Dog. Uh, I joined Naughty Dog. Uh, as a fan of the company. I was a huge fan of Crash Bandicoot and the Jack and Daxter games, of course. Uh, and so as I got involved in the early stages of the creation of Uncharted, I could see really just how all of the talented folks at the company were really coming together, uh, putting their minds together, both on the technology side and on the gameplay storytelling side, to make something that was going to be really special. So yeah, I don't know, it was something that you could kind of feel it in the air from pretty much the very first day. Uncharted 2's multiplayer was the first time we'd uh, made a multiplayer game in, uh, in about five years and uh, we really, really liked what we'd been able to achieve with it. Um, we have a, a big, uh, very enthusiastic player base who are still playing a lot a year and a half after the release of the game. Uh, so that gave us an excellent springboard to make the multiplayer component of Uncharted 3. We've been working on it since almost before we finished Uncharted 2, uh, building out new multiplayer maps and coming up with ideas for new uh, both competitive and cooperative game types. We've added in a ton of customizable content including customizable player characters, customizable symbols that people can use for their clans or which, are, and which appear in game and a whole uh, uh, tiered unlocking system of boosters uh, that players can use the in-game cash to buy to give themselves uh, a little bit of a leg up in the, uh, in the multiplayer sphere. So we've been working really hard on the Uncharted 3 multiplayer and we're very excited to see uh, just how it goes over when we, when we release the game in November of 2011.